Friends, it is good to be with you, as it always is. Uh, it's my privilege to preach the word God has placed in my heart tonight, and I was actually doing pretty well until the Lord prayed for me, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, love you too. For the past few weeks, we've been mining the book of Proverbs for wise words to guide us in the course of our everyday lives, a series for which I am grateful both because of Lenora's intent behind it and the opportunity it's given to take a, a deeper look at Proverbs, which I've not had, uh, not had before. Now, I doubt any of you have ever looked at my bio on the Trinity website. But one of the things it says there is that I have a passion for worship and for seeing people grow in grace as they connect their everyday, ordinary lives with God's plan and purpose. And if there's one thing that has come across in my preaching in this chapel over the past five years, I hope it's precisely that. Grace and all the ways our everyday, ordinary lives matter to God. So tonight we conclude this series, Wise Words, Lessons from Proverbs for Our Everyday Lives, and I have to confess that I never would have imagined that the passage for tonight would have been the basis for my last sermon in this chapel with all of you, a community that has meant so much to me, but as only God's Spirit is capable of doing, I think it's turned out to be more fitting than I would have imagined. My hope is uh, that you'll receive this tonight as parting words meant just for you, uh, the 635 community, my beloved community, and that you'll join me in the worship center as it's already shared here tonight next week to celebrate my commissioning and hear parting words that I have for all of Trinity. But before we get to tonight, I invite you to please pray with me. Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on us this evening, so that in the reading of the scripture your word is heard, in the meditations of our hearts your word is known, and in the faithfulness of our lives your word is shown. Amen. So now I'd like to read from Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 31. It's a lot of text, but worth hearing. And I want to read it from the voice, which is a modern language dynamic equivalent translation of the Bible, as they call it. And I've not ever used the voice before, but I found this particular translation to be uh, appropriate for tonight. So hear now the word of God. Who can find a truly excellent woman, one who is superior in all that she is and all that she does? Her worth far exceeds that of rubies and expensive jewelry. She inspires trust and her husband's heart is safe with her. And because of her, he has every good thing. Every day of her life, she does what is best for him, never anything harmful or hurtful. Delight attends her work and guides her fingers as she selects the finest wool and flax for spinning. She moves through the market like merchant ships that dock here and there in distant ports finally arriving home with food she's carried from afar. She rises from bed early, in the still of night, carefully preparing food for her family and providing a portion to her servants. She has a plan. She considers some land and buys it. Then, with her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She wraps herself in strength, carries herself with confidence, and works hard strengthening her arms for the task at hand. She tastes success and knows it is good. And under lamplight, she works deep into the night. Her hands skillfully place the unspun flax and wool on the distaff, and her fingers twist the spindle until thread forms. She reaches out to the poor and extends mercy to those in need. She is not worried about the cold, or snow for her family, for she has clothed them all in warm crimson coats. She makes her own bed linens and clothes herself in purple and fine cloth. Everyone recognizes her husband in the public square, and no one fails to respect him as he takes his place of leadership in the community. She makes linen garments and sells them in the market, and she supplies 
belts for tradesmen to carry across the sea. Clothed in strength and dignity, with nothing to fear, she smiles when she thinks about the future. She conducts her conversations with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is ever her concern. She directs the activities of her household, and never does she indulge in laziness. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband, too, joins in the praise, saying, There are some, indeed many, women who do well in every way. But of all of them, only you are truly excellent. Charm can be deceptive, and physical beauty will not last. But a woman who reveres the eternal should be praised above all others. Celebrate all she has achieved. Let all her accomplishments publicly praise her. The word of God for the people of God. And God's people respond, thanks be to God. So how many of you have ever heard the phrase, Proverbs 31 woman? Okay, there's a lot of hands going up. Yeah, that's a thing, right? As author Rachel, Rachel Held Evans wrote in her book, A Year of Biblical Womanhood, in a chapter dedicated entirely to Proverbs 31, she writes, In the evangelical Christian subculture, there are three people a girl's got to know before she gets her period. Jesus, Ronald Reagan, and the Proverbs 31 woman. Now, if that sounds a bit irreverent to you, I invite you to stay with me for a minute because she goes on to explain, and she's not wrong, how the Proverbs 31 woman is so often miscast as God's ideal for women. Our passage for tonight is a poem, the subject of which is the truly excellent woman as the uh, voice Bible translates it, who serves as the definitive and tangible expression of the virtues celebrated throughout all of Proverbs. We've been unpacking this for a month now. Wisdom. And the poem is packed with hyperbolic imagery. The poem is an acrostic, which means that it's, a, it's alphabetical. The first word of each verse begins with the consecutive letter of the Hebrew alphabet, helps in memorization. And this communicates, this poem communicates a sense of totality as the poet praises the everyday achievements of an upper class Jewish wife, a woman who keeps her household functioning day and night by buying, trading, investing, planning, sewing, weaving, managing servants, extending charity, providing food for the family, and preparing for each season. She is so accomplished, in fact, that translators can't seem to agree on an adjective to describe her. So depending on who you ask, a lucky man will find a good wife, an excellent wife, a competent wife, a capable wife, a virtuous and capable wife, a wife of noble character, a virtuous woman, a worthy woman, a valiant woman, a capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman. Those are all different Bible translations from verse 10. They can't agree. So when you really think about it, it's no wonder then that somewhere along the way, this passage got twisted into a prescriptive interpretation as a to-do list through which women might earn the praise of men, which is really what the Proverbs 31 woman stuff is, is all about. And precisely the reason why there are books on the shelves of Christian bookstores bearing titles like Becoming the Woman God Wants Me to Be, a 90-Day Guide to Living the Proverbs 31 Life. Now, as part of writing her book, Rachel decided to do just that, to live Proverbs 31 prescriptively, like a to-do list, for a month. And hilarity ensues. If you're not familiar with Rachel Friday, she's worth a read. And so she had come up with a, a daily to-do list. Every day for 31 days, these were the things that she was going to do. And there was also a monthly to-do list of things that she was going to tackle before the month was over. So I'm going to run down them quickly. Every day, 
get up before dawn, because in verse 15 it says she rises from bed early in the still of the night. Okay? She was going to practice contemplative prayer, because a woman who reveres the eternal should be praised above all others, as we're told in verse 30. She was going to work out her arms, because she wraps herself in strength and carries herself with confidence and works hard, strengthening her arms for the task at hand in verse 17. She was going to make every meal and keep the house clean, carefully preparing food for her family, as we're told in verse 15, and directing the activities of her household, as we're told in verse 27. Every day she was going to do something nice for her husband, Dan, because in verse 12 it says every day of her life she does what is best for him. And in verse 11, because of her, he had every good thing. She was going to avoid TV, Facebook, and Twitter, something we should all aspire to do. Because in verse 27, it says, never does she indulge in laziness. And she was going to work every day until 9 p.m. Because in verse 18, it says, under lamp light, she works deep into the night. So, like I said, in addition to these daily to-do items, she had a whole list of monthly objectives. You've heard a lot about sewing. But she didn't know how to sew. So she borrowed <laughs> her sister's sewing machine and got the book Sewing for Dummies and was planning to sew scarf for her husband and lots of cats. It was all very ambitious. And about this experience, Rachel writes, I knew from my research that Proverbs 31 was never meant to be turned into a to-do list. But there was something about the spectacularity with which I was blowing this, meaning <laughs> her to-do list, that beleaguered my confidence. And I really feel a lot of it. Most women walk around with the sense that they are disappointing someone. This year I imagined that someone to be God. Though Proverbs 31 represented a poetic couldn't shake the feeling that if these were indeed the accomplishments of a competent, capable, virtuous, valiant, and worthy wife, then I must be none of these things. Ouch. Well, thankfully, through an email exchange with an Orthodox Jewish woman from Israel, she befriended while writing her book, Rachel Learned the Truth about Proverbs 31. She was meant to discover. In Jewish culture, it is not the women who memorize Proverbs 31. The men memorize Proverbs 31. Husbands commit each line of this poem to memory so they can recite it or sing it over their wives at their Sabbath meal every Friday night. And it goes like this. Blessing over the woman. It is a blessing that was never meant 
to be earned, but a blessing meant to be given, and given without condition. The first words of the blessing are Ishet Chayel, which in the Jewish culture is most commonly translated as a valorous woman. So the first line of the poem in its entirety is a valorous woman who can find her value is far beyond pearls. And this is what Rachel's friend had to say about these words being sung over her by her husband each week. It's special because I know that no matter what I do or don't do, he praises me for blessing the family with my energy and creativity. Then she offered this encouragement to Rachel. All women can do that in their own way. And I bet you do as well. So, in my life, there is no woman more valorous than my dad. I can't imagine our family without her energy and creativity. Everything she does, big and small, in the course of her everyday, ordinary life, deserves blessing and encouragement. I can't sing in Hebrew. But I can say, Ishet Chayel. So stay home yesterday morning with a sick kid, Ishet Chayel. Attend an important meeting at the church last night, Ishet Chayel. Pick up the kids from school, Ishet Chayel. Make sure they're fed before coming to church to lead worship, Ishet Chayel. Love her adoring husband, in spite of his often grumpy disposition, Ishet Chayel. Baby. Ishet Hayel on that one. Um, but you get the idea. Ishet Hayel is a blessing that celebrates a woman who in the glory of her everyday life does even the smallest things with valor. Here's how Rachel puts it. And you're going to have to forgive me for quoting her so much tonight. But why give you my wisdom when I can give you hers? Wisdom is a woman, after all. We learned that in this series, didn't we? Rachel writes that Proverbs 31 woman is a star, not because of what she does, but how she does it. With valor. So do your thing. If it's refurbishing old furniture, do it with valor. If it's keeping up with your two-year-old, do it with valor. If it's fighting against you in trafficking, leading the company, or getting other people to do your work for you, do it with valor. Take risks, work hard, make mistakes, get up the next morning, and surround yourself with people who will cheer you on. So you know something? Rachel's encouragement, to me, sounds an awful lot like Paul's encouragement for the Romans in the first verse of chapter 12, with a slight but significant addition, I might add. So here's what I want you to do, God help you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering, and do it with valor. And that's the point, isn't it? Following Jesus takes valor, and taking risks, and working hard, and making mistakes, and doing it again, and again, and again in the everyday and ordinary. And that can get discouraging. So it is essential you surround yourself with people who will cheer you on. My dear friends, my beloved 635 community, you have no idea how much your love and support has encouraged me these past five years. It has been such a privilege to gather with you Wednesday after Wednesday for the worship of God. To sing God's praise, to pray, to hear God's word read and proclaimed, to gather at the Lord's table together. I love and appreciate you all so much and will continue to pray for you, giving thanks to God for you. As I know you will be praying for me. So, to the women, I say, you should.
shed chayel. And you can say that. Say, say, proclaim it. Women of Babylon, you are. Oh, she said the Hebrew. <laughs> Classic overachiever here. <laughs> Write original drama for the Christmas worship series, Isha Chaya. <laughs> Women of Valor, say that. Women of Valor. And to the men, I say Adam, which is Hebrew for person or man. Uh, Adam Chaya. Say men of Valor. Yeah. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> We're going to do this again. Women of Valor. Men of Valor. Men of Valor. You all have been a people of valor for me. Um, your everyday ordinary lives, I know, uh, matter to God, and they matter to me. I am so grateful uh, for all of you. And I pray that tonight you receive these words of blessing and encouragement for your journeys of grace, because that's what we are all on. We spend our lives journeying from grace to grace to grace, seeking to become more fully the people that God created and called us to be. And yes, Proverbs 31, woman, is it's all, it's lady wisdom. All of Proverbs points to lady wisdom, and that wisdom is a woman. Proverbs ends with this blessing over a woman, but that blessing is a blessing for us all. May we all be, as we seek to follow Christ in our everyday ordinary lives, may we all be people of valor. Because God knows the world that is watching the church right now needs a people of valor. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we pause this evening to thank you for the gift of everyday, ordinary life. Life that, including even the smallest of things, can be lived with valor for your glory. I give you thanks tonight for the everyday, ordinary lives of these, your people at the 635 in particular, and for the blessing they are to me. And so now I pray your blessing over them. Give them courage and strength, O oh God, to live selflessly and bravely. And I pray that 